well. I thought we could take a look at a really pretty 57-year-old Women's Day magazine. It's from December 1966. It was 15 cents, and we have maybe a perfect holiday outfit for a little girl on the cover. And inside, I read in the information, the makes and prices of these items. The side button dress was made by Gay Sprites, and it was $12 and 100% stretch fabric. The tights and the turtleneck were $10, and the boots were by a company called Miss Sandler. They were 100% smooth leather, and they were $12. And she's sitting on a pinkish red block with a red background, so a lot of red and white for the holiday season that was coming. So let's take a look at what's inside. The first page is an ad for Del Monte beans, canned beans, with a recipe. Pennsylvania Dutch style green beans. And if you have bacon, onion, cornstarch, salt, dry mustard, the beans, brown sugar, vinegar, and these hard cooked eggs. I've never had anything like that. We have a pretty dish and a pretty bag holder. Here is an ad for Clairol Condition, the beauty pack treatment. Do you have to hide your hair to look prettier? Look at how sad she looks in that faded picture with a hood on. But then she used Clairol Condition and whoo, look at the flip. We're going to see a lot of that 60s flip in our magazine. Here's some people that contributed to the issue. Peg Bracken and Paul Engel. Peg Bracken was a humorist that is often featured in these women's magazines from this time. Here are the table of contents, and here's an ad for big news. This was big news at the time. Super Stripe. I think striped toothpaste had just been invented. Striped toothpaste was invented in 1955. And the man was from New York City who invented it, and he sold the patent to Unilever, who eventually made Aquafresh. There's an ad for baggies. Good red meat stays red, fresh looking longer in baggies. And they show a meat grinder. That's a cool ad. Neighbors. It was a feature with little anecdotal stories that people wrote in to share with the magazine. And here's an ad from Grolier advertising the new book of knowledge. And the you would get 20 volumes of blue and ivory encyclopedias bound. The cash price is $199.50, $10 down, $10 a month. And we have the teacher and her students, but a teacher can only do so much. So buy your children the new book of knowledge. Let's add for contact. The best way to catch a cold, catch it early. Came in little packets. Here's a story. There are some words in here that we don't use anymore, but this was a candle uh, manufacturing place set up by the Kennedy Foundation where intellectually disabled people could learn to make candles. It was in Mansfield, Connecticut.
and then it traveled across the country. Here's a story about the church decorating celebration at St. George's Episcopal Church in Manhattan. I'll show you a picture of the church. I don't know that they have that decorating day anymore, but they had the church open to New Yorkers and people would come decorate the whole church. Here's a new Christmas tree is born. A shore pine plus a lodgepole pine equals a hybrid Christmas tree. <laughs> and dog power for the woman driver. They show a lady with a sled dog team. They highlighted a group of women in Denver, Colorado, who were training dogs to race. Here's an ad for Syracuse, China. Simply elegant, I'll say. This is the Angelica, and it was $25.95 for a five-piece setting. Here is a story about Michael Keane. There he is with Shirley McLean and Gambit. And they interviewed Michael Caine. He was 33 at the time. He's 90 years old now. And he was born Maurice Joseph Micklewright. And he talks about his true poverty, Cockney background. And his father was a cook and his mother was a charwoman. And that word caught my eye because I watch a lot of British television and I know exactly what a charwoman is. So he is definitely a rags to riches success story. Here's an ad for Kraft Spaghetti Dinner. The quick kind you cook up fresh. I never have had this and they don't make it anymore. My mom never bought it. Says maybe we should call this Roman spaghetti. It's that Italian. Thin Italian type spaghetti, fresh made by you in 15 minutes. It says also try spaghetti with meat sauce and mild American spaghetti. Hmm. This might be my favorite ad of the whole magazine, but it might not be. Here we have Fisher Prices toughest toy testers. Look at this little guy. Look at how sad he looks. He's got a xylophone. The rest of them look, well, I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say the rest of them look happy. They've got a clock. I'm not sure what that is. And then the dog. She's got the dog. We're going to look at all the toys here. My grandma had this. Because we definitely had the used, we played with the used version of this. The creative coaster with the blocks and then there were sticks to put in the holes. This was the roly-poly chime bowl. We had that with the rocking horse figures. The chatter telephone, look at her cute little face talking on the phone. Oh, this was a big deal. We never had this. The Fisher Price Big performing circus. Wow. That came in two different sizes. The school bus with the people in it, little figures. The famous puppy puppy train. Look at his cute face. Engine chugs and the eyes roll. Look at this kid holding this up to his ear. The new music box pocket radio. The pictures move as the tune plays. And this is the music box iron. While you ironed, it would play music. And of course, we have the Snoopy Sniffer. It says, a favorite play pop for 20, at least 20 years, it might say 28. Fisher Price toys are worked is child's play. Here's a Christmas tableau to make. We have a nativity scene with angels up top and this is all handmade with the patterns to follow. 
the, the three wise men, some animals, baby Jesus and Mary and Joseph, and the whole, the gang's all here. And they even made the show. Here is a colony filter cigarettes ad. And what they're telling us is if you buy their types of cigarettes, you can send in this coupon to LA. It was a PO box in LA. And they would send you a certain amount of whatever type of trading stamps that you want. I don't see S&H green stamps on here. Maybe they weren't invented yet. But the other one that I had heard of was gold something. My mom was just talking about it, gold bell. All of these different types of stamps that you would collect and fill in a book. And you could take it to their store, depending on your area, and you could trade it in for something. My mom collected SNH green stamps, and I remember the one thing that she did get was a four slice toaster. I even remember going to the store, their special little store. Here's a an ad for craft Italian dressing. Low calorie. There's a Santa hat, a pilgrim's hat. I will keep you in shape during the holidays ahead. They had four varieties. Each teaspoon was only three and a half calories. They had French, blue cheese, Italian, and a fruit and slaw dressing. Here are some of the auto gifts that Santa might bring the auto lover in your life. Emergency toolkits and flashers, different visors to put, or additional visors to put on your existing visor in your car to keep out the sun. Extra mirrors to check your makeup. You know, you think about it, they don't they didn't have a lot of the things that the cars would normally automatically come with now, like a makeup mirror and whatnot. Here's a diamond nut ad. Any brand beside diamond would be just plain nuts. And you could send a quarter to Diamond Walnuts in Clinton, Ohio to get a 92 page cookbook. Christmas gifts for gardeners, small hand tools, power tools and sprayers, a useful tote to put things in, a gadget to kneel on for gardeners with sore knees, and here's an ad for a palm olive gold. It had to happen, a new wash-on deodorant, palm olive gold, and it gives you more hexachlorophene more, more, to stop odor than any leading deodorant soap. So everybody go look up what hexachlorophene is and it might still be in soap, deodorant soap for all I know. These are stockings to knit and we see five little children nestled in bed with a red blanket And these wonderful stockings filled with toys. And they're gigantic. They can fill a lot of toys. And they do here. They're very colorful and they have bold designs. Some of them have tassels. Well, they all have tassels. Bring back the old-fashioned magic of holiday baking with molasses. This is an ad for Brer Rabbit Molasses. You could send away for a free booklet for them. Molasses Magic. You are sending that to Grand Central Station, New York. Here's two recipes. Molasses Sugar Cookie and Molasses Cutout Cookies. That one says Merry Christmas. There's a big candy cane, a snowman, a stocking. 
this has been a common theme in these older woman's day. An antique buying guide. Maybe some people were having antique hunts as a hobby then. They show some of the things that you should be looking for and the years that they were popular. Flower pins, gold watches, chokers, pins, cameos, stick pins. Oh, look at this hat. Betty Crocker Butter Cake. New, the richest, moistest tasting cake since cakes were, since mixes were invented. It was just called Butter Cake. And they had devil's food in yellow. Young velveteen fashions in a merry mood. Velveteen goes with the playful, prancing spirit of a Christmas party, becomes demure and decorous for a church, a piano recital, or any special occasion during the year. So these dresses are designed by Arnold Scassi, and they have detailing that underlines the soft luster and rich texture of the fabric. And the suits are tailored in classic English schoolboy style. All of this was available at Montgomery Wards and everything was under $10. Isn't that cute? The double breasted dress with an A line pleat. This one has an A line pleat in the front. That one has an applique pocket. And then, of course, the boys have on very colorful little suits. There's a blue bonnet ad. Soft or regular, you can't beat famous blue bonnet flavor. Everything's better with blue bonnet on it. This General Electric ad has the little characters from Rupert, the red-nosed reindeer which had come out in 1964. So that was two years before this. Looking for gifts to unwrap smiles? General Electric has them. There's Yukon Cornelius. They have the popular new automatic clothes brush to vacuum your clothing. Love at first light, the GE his and her pocket cigarette lighters. They're windproof. They never need a flint or a fluid. Really? Oh, you plug them in. Rechargeable units, of course, have a built-in chrome ashtray. This is for your coffee lovers. Stainless steel coffee maker. The tap and set show alarm. Once it's set, only a tap turns it off and on. There's Santa and one of the elves. Here's the a, a low boy blender. What's this? A fire starter. Oh, I hope people were careful with that. It's a fan forest fire starter to start your fireplace and your barbecue. Another elf. And then there's Hermie, the elf. Progress is our most important product. GE Housewares out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. And then, of course, they have an electric sheet pot. This mad. It's a story by Paul Engel. Christmas dinner on the farm. This man, Paul Engel, grew up in Iowa. And this is a nostalgic evocation of a small boy's Christmas on an Iowa farm to touch sympathetic chords with all of us. Paul Engel was a poet, an editor, and a novelist, and he was the director of the Iowa's Writer Workshop for a long time. He was going to Poland to, an ex to accept an award later in his life, and he died in Chicago's O'Hare Airport, I learned. It's so sad. Look at these fashions. The Gold Rush 1966. Dazzle, glamour, and dash, and five holiday fashions but here's the catch. These are patterns and you have to sew them. So this is a shimmering t-shirt dress. Wow. 
The cost to make this was about $36. It was a simplicity pattern, as I think they all are. This one is, this was a gold embossed tent coat. It was about $51 to make. This is the same fabric, but this is a gold embossed sheath made out of brocade to match the coat. About $22 to make. Seems like a lot of money. The fabric must have been very expensive then, and it is now too. But this is a gold dusted a-line dress, about $20 to make. It has a jeweled braid at the collar and cuff. This is the gilded cage dress. That was about $22 to make. It's made of fishnet with a gold truco slip beneath it. I shudder to think of what this would have turned out like if I would have tried to sew it Got to give people a lot of credit. Here's some holiday hairstyles, but the photos are rather blurred. We're going to look at them anyway. The debutante, it's classic, casual, and uncomplicated. Shoulder length, back swept, caught in a crisscross boat-like band of hair. This is the Angelique. And it says, it's particularly becoming to a small head. It sweeps dramatically across the forehead with an outward flip behind the ears. She's a red head. Are they all blondes? Maybe strawberry blondes? Nope, no brunettes to be found. So, that's okay. This is classic, serene, and simple. So we have a smooth back crown of hair and a low chignon bow with a flower. And this is the caprice. Hmm. It's very, it has a pert forward swirl over one cheek with softly rounded contours on the opposite side. And is it? Pretty, another flower in her hair. Romantic is reminiscent of the lovely ladies in bouffant ball gowns in classic portraits. Large, full poofs at the back crown. Whatever happened to the Five Little Peppers by Peg Bracken? Remember Peg at the beginning, our humorist? She's lamenting a little bit over the changes in children's literature and how kids seemed to be straying from the classics at the time. So they have some illustrations from some of that fall 1966 new books. Here we have Oh What Nonsense, Nightbirds on Nantucket, the Monster's Den. That looks cool. I've never heard of any of these. These were a little before my time. And I was an avid reader, but that was the 70s when I was a kid. Wonderful Time. The 17th Street Gang. Look at these kids. They're trying to trip that couple. And this is Sailor's Choice. All these illustrations. And then they have some children's favorites up here. And this is a long story. It's continued through many pages of ads throughout this magazine. The illustrations are wonderful. This is by Helen McCulley and Dorothy Crater. Look at Donuts for Santa. This is an autobiographical story by Helen about her family in the night around 1910s in Canada. She grew up in a great big Victorian house and one year she got a pony for Christmas. Helen McCulley is credited 
mainly for discovering Julia Child. She was a food writer. Helen was mo mostly in these women's magazines. But this was her autobiographical story about her childhood. And the drawings, like I said, are wonderful. There's Humpty Dumpty, stockings, a train with kids jumping down, a street scene. But somebody's looking out a pretty window out at the street. Maybe the pony's coming. There he is. Picture of the pony. We'll return to that as we flip through. How to decorate your home for Christmas. Now, isn't that a classic look there? A glass bowl and candlesticks with a white dove and a nest of gold balls and cedar. And then there's cedar around the candles. Pretty nice. For a warm Christmas welcome to family and friends, a festive front door, strips of red and green oil cloth for paneling, a wreath and trees of artificial poinsettias and leaves, red candles, and a black lantern. It's just lovely. One decorating tip they share is try to build up one area in each room as the focal point and center of interest. I think that that is good advice even now. Front doors and halls to greet your guests deserve the most festive of decorations. And they have a red carpet approach to the front door. They have a carpet leading up to the door. They have lights going up. They, these branches, we can't tell on this picture because it's black and white, but they're sprayed green and then trimmed with small lights. And then they put paper mache birds on them. They have wreaths hanging with ribbons, different candlesticks. This is, these are made with pine and then you put aluminum tubing in. And look at the swag garland for the stairway. With, I'm assuming, artificial grapes. Very traditional looking with golden green wallpaper bows and beads. Holiday decorations, the more the merrier for every room of your home. Now, what do you think of some of these? This is a chandelier of round box tops banded with red vel velvet ribbon and gold foil ornaments. These are hurricane lamps of perforated gold aluminum. It's a lot of aluminum then, huh? A boxwood wreath with a dove held by Red velvet ribbons, another dove, a chandelier of greens, wired to a center dowel with red candles, a oval of tinsel, wow, perforated aluminum, red and green bulbs, and then we have a gold tinsel tree. There's a silver tinsel tree. Those were popular then. This is, um, Number seven, snowflakes of strips of perforated gold aluminum. That's all they have there. This is number eight. That's pretty in vogue. A circle of you, pine cones and berries to decorate your hanging lamp. There's ornaments hung on your house plant. Ball of aluminum and tinsel to hold holly or mistletoe. They've made this out of plywood and it holds candy in different layers with four candles up top. Another U wreath trimmed by this time wired gold velvet ribbons and bows. And this. Is just strings of paper cups glued rim to rim, painted 
red and green. Here's the holiday wreaths. It looks like they've used the same wreath, except for that, that's more of a spray, and just decorated them differently. This one's peppermint stripe tissue balls with a matching ribbon. This one has red feather birds with small clusters of almonds and hazelnuts. This is concentric circles of felt in vibrant colors and they're glued together. Miniature musical instruments and then gold foil fans and then the spray of greens with mirrored ornaments to catch the light. We have place settings. Here we have the festive tray with a candle with a circle of berries and flowers underneath it and a little gift on the plate wrapped in gold foil. This is a modern table in all Christmas colors. Green goblets, red napkins, green placemats. There's probably soup in these little red dishes. What do you think? I don't know. And a green and red table setting. Ooh, look at that. This is a gala party table and they even have Christmas tree china. So this is They've made the tablecloth to match this ribbon. These are four pie-shaped pieces of striped, peppermint striped cotton sewed together. And there's the informal buffet table. I mean, it looks pretty formal to me, huh? With fruit and then all of your utensils and coffee cups and a pretty wreath in the window. And here's more ideas. You can make a gumdrop tree a wagon filled with treats for kids, and sculptured wood trees here. And these are a spiral candle holder made with dowels and a plywood base that looks complicated. When I saw these photos of the food, the, your buffet, your holiday buffet, I, I always love them, first of all. They're so decadent. And I thought of my father-in-law, and then I thought of Don Draper, if you're a Mad Men uh, fan, because didn't he love ham? So this is the holiday buffet of supper. Glazed roast, fresh ham, garnished with fruit and parsley, shrimp and curried rice, topped with a chutney, pickled peppers, Toasted sesame seed rolls, and they're just saying a chocolate dessert. It looks just like a big bowl of pudding with some whipped cream on it. This is the teenage get together. Well, the teenage get together supper table with barbecue spirits, oven fried chicken, corn on the cob, potato chips, chili tuna dip pickles, and a relish garnish. Here's the teenage dessert table. Waffles, ice cream cubes, fruit medley, chocolate sauce for your sundaes, and then candy canes and soft drinks. Here's the trim the tree supper. Assorted cold cuts, rolled, to make them look pretty. Coleslaw with radish roses, chowder, a seafood chowder, rye and pumpernickel bread, butter, and a coconut grenadine trifle to round it all off. Look at those candlesticks, wooden international Christmas cookies, and all the recipes for the cookies are in this little book. All the old women's days had a little cookbook included in it. 
So these were the light and dark ornamental sugar cookies that you could decorate and they've made them into ornaments for this to hang on the tree. Little Colonel's Christmas Crullers, jewel brooch cookies, press cookies, cookie press cookies. My mom used to make these. Lace cookies, lincer cookies, Portuguese walnut squares, almond diamonds, fee muse. I don't never how to say that yet. Uh, Christmas wreaths, antebellum brown sugar wafers, chocolate pecan crinkles, pecan macaroons, mystery and aniseed drops, and hazelnut crescents. You have a little angel with a cookie plate on the little recipe book there. And here were all your recipe are not rest well there might be recipes on them all your dinner plans for the whole month this the third of december would be my style savory frankfurters and beans <laughs> and then just salad orange slices and cookies and they always had a dessert christmas with a large family look at that old photo this was in March 1965 at a wedding where two families came together. Walter Weir was a advertising executive. He dropped out of school to try to make it in vaudeville. He ended up working in a mail room and worked his way up to owning his own advertising agency. But he talks there about growing up as an only child and then how he loved spending Christmas with a large family. And here's the whole story of how the Grinch stole Christmas by Dr. Seuss. And the reason this was a big deal is because this was the first year it was on TV. Watch for the Grinch on television in CBS's 30 minute animated musical color special on Sunday, December 18th. There's the Grinch himself. They were introducing the Grinch. And here are, I don't know if these are taken straight from the book. I assume they probably are these illustrations. Here's another. Yes, please. Here's an ad for Campbell's Soup makes it quick and easy to cook. Italian style. Chicken cacciatore. I think they're using tomato soup in all of them. Yep, lasagna and spaghetti and meatballs. I don't know how they would turn out. You would need to send 50 cents to get the Cooking with Soup cookbook. It was 500 pages though. That was the continuation of the Iowa farm story. Dinner on the farm. Nuts from the farm grove, hazelnuts, black walnuts, butternut, uh, butternuts, hickory nuts, dried raisins, apples, cottage cheese, home-baked bread, it sounds lovely. Look what you can do with clean peaches, hot, and Miracle Whip. I don't know about this. You're using California clean peaches and Miracle Whip. So the sandwich is two cups of turkey salad, rye bread, which is toasted. The fluffy topping is an egg white, cream of tartar, and Miracle Whip. The hot peach garnish is a can of peach halves, parquet margarine, lemon juice, and your Prepare the turkey salad, spread it on the toast, beat the egg white until it form in the, the until it forms stiff peaks. Spoon it onto the sandwiches. Then you're in. So spoon it onto the sandwiches. Spoon the melted margarine and lemon juice over the peach halves. You're baking it all together. 
to make that brown up. And then you're putting your pimento and pickle relish in those peaches. Here are more of the recipes. Here's a hand ad. It's very pink. Swift's premium hostess ham, canned ham. And it was a hostess ham. It must have been like the kind of ham that is not canned. I don't know. It was called a hostess ham. Thank goodness for banquet frozen foods. There is my dad's favorite thing right there. A hot turkey sandwich. Boiling in the bag, the cooking bag. Gravy with sliced beef, chicken, a la king, and sliced turkey. He loved that. Reynolds wrap. This was flavor stuffed potatoes. Looks good. With olives. And Reynolds wrap. Now, let's say you were on a budget and you needed to make a craft for Christmas time and you had a milk carton. You could make this candle if you had a, a, one of these milk containers because the plastic coating kept it from sticking. You could just peel that right off. I remember making something like this in school. You need a pair of them and ice cubes, and I hope you're, I would probably burn myself. So that's one way you could make a candle. Here we have a Chef Boyardee spaghetti sauce, a marinara. They were putting that on tuna. I don't know about that. A spaghetti sauce with meat, that's on beef. Continuation of our pony store, Chef Boyardee spaghetti sauce, and there's the chef himself with all of his different sauces. I never knew he made that many sauces. We have the Christmas pony, and here's a carol syrup recipe. Festive holiday treats with one easy carol recipe. They look delicious. Easy carol candy. Margarine. Crystal clear syrup, corn syrup, powdered sugar, and vanilla. You can make filled fruits or nuts, mini patties, bonbons, or the pièce de résistance here, the peppermint popcorn tree. I'm going to get a little adult here. A lot of these ads, this. This particular magazine doesn't have the the, the granddaddy of um, ads about intimate products. What I've learned is all these germicidal products for that were um, a roundabout way of promoting this is a form of birth control. I don't think it worked very well, but maybe it worked for some people because this is a long time ago. It's 1966. You can't just go to the doctor and get put on a birth control pill or whatever form you chose, but they're always put in the back of the magazines and they're always black and white. They usually have to do with germicidal properties and I read about one ad that I saw in another magazine and that's I'm sure that's what this leads you to as well the germicidal properties is if they're using them for birth control that's what grandfathers are made of by Bernice Jane Herman it talks about how wonderful it is to have a, a, a grandfather who spends time with you and listens to you and provides a, a listening ear. How to steal a dog. 
This is an Auntie Frisky's Mix Dog Food. I've never heard of it. From Carnation. Pretty lady with the dog. So how do you steal a dog? It's easy. Feed him Frisky's Mix. And he'll know whose dog he really is. Did she steal him from her husband? I don't know. Here's an advert. A, a food scale? Save money on cat toys by Tidy Cat. Look at the little kitty putting a dime in the piggy bank. Good things from apples. Mmm, apple cranberry punch. Pork chop bake with apples. Sweet and pungent spare ribs. Apple juice salad mold. And Swedish apple cake. Howard Johnson's had frozen food, really. Fried clams. And seven ounces. I bet you they were good. Explosive new novel by the authors of The Ugly American, Sarkhan. It's a wine ad. Please, girls, don't fight over Myers Wines from Ohio. Some more neighbor tip. What's this? Wakefield's Alaska King Crab Meat. Different ways to cook. Vegetables, braised cucumbers, asparagus crisps, Italian style green beans, gravy master gravy. Be a good guy. Cartoon by Charles Schultz. One gift works many wonders, the United Way, and he's dressed as an angel. He kind of looks like Linus. For the youngest sweater wearer, isn't that sweet? And of course, they give the instructions to create that. You're knitting that. It's for a baby. Bake this red apple coffee ring the new easy cool rise way with Robin Hood flour. It's using the Cool Rice Sweet Dough Basic Recipe and then adding apples, butter, sugar, and cinnamon. Throw away your recipe for butterscotch cookies. It's now sadly out of date because of brownulated sugar by Domino. They have a wreath, a tree, a star, and maybe a flower. New no lump brown sugar that pours. Here's another ham ad. Ham with cranberry glaze, ham with apricot glaze, ham in aspic, and ham with shod frode. That's, you need a five pound Polish ham, chicken broth, lemon juice, plain gelatin, mayonnaise, scallion, carrot, and olives to make that shell, let's say, over the ham. Polish ham. Behind every beautiful glaze on this page is a genuine Polish ham. Well, what were we just talking about? This, you could send this in for a foam from Ortho, a, a contraceptive foam. And then they have some things that are coming up in the magazine. For January. Restored dentures to their original whiteness. How to have a beautiful complexion. Some more of our patterns. Things to do by telephone. Look at all her different emotions. Recruit a den mother. Lay down the law to the repairman. Find a nice home for the last of the puppies. Make an appointment for a smashing new hairdo. Tell the store to send those teeny weeny tomatoes for the party. Try to find a new and nerveless babysitter. Get out the vote. Learn estimate for fixing the fender. Ugh. And then learn husband still loves you in spite of fender. AT&T. Dermassage lotion. You've got a fight on your hands. It's the instructions for our decorations. Calms anxiety and lifts depression. Anison, an Anison ad. She doesn't look real happy up there, but then she took Anison. 
It's one of my favorite, favorite ads. It's in the back of the magazine this time, though. The Wrigley's ad, the Wrigley's Spearmint Gum ads that always have a dessert with them. And in this case, it's Santa Claus cookies. Sugar cookies rolled thin. And you could send away for the cookie cutter. And that's on a plate with greens. Sarah Coventry pin. I think that that pin was in a magazine that I just looked at. Enjoy a glamorous career by becoming an interior designer. You could send that in to Chicago to an extension office. Here's Jif Foam Oven Cleaner, Dr. Scholl's. We have our instructions for the hairstyles and continuations for the stories, commemorative spoons, the President John F. Kennedy spoon. You would get that extra gift for promptness absolutely free. And mothers, get this new at-home toothbrushing test as part of Colgate's National Dental Health School program. You can send away for that for 50 cents. You would get all that. Hints for a lovelier complexion by Margaret Merrill, a Beauty skincare consultant. Here are some more patterns for the dresses. And here is a Breck Girl ad with the beautiful artwork. This Christmas, may you look as beautiful as you feel with three green bows and a pretty white dress and her blonde locks. And the last ad is for Gerba Baby Food. And we see a handsome dad and a beautiful baby, bringing up baby. Hints collected by Mrs. Dan Gerber, mother of five, getting to know each other. And this is for baby food, but they give tips for bonding dad with baby during mealtime. So there's our December 1966 Women's Day. I have evening light for this magazine. That never happens, but I really thank you for watching me, and I hope you have a great day. Bye.